how many sports betting accounts should you have? The short answer, loads. Now, I know a lot of people are not gonna wanna hear this. You know, when I was a newbie gambler starting out, not from the very early days, because I didn't even used to bet online. I used to bet inside brick and mortar betting shops. But when I started to bet online, I only had like one or two bookmaker accounts. And people that were more in the know than me used to tell me, James, you need to have more than, you know, two accounts. You need to have 10 accounts, 15 accounts. That's, you're gonna earn more money if you do that. And although I believed them, I knew they was telling the truth, I didn't wanna hear it. And I think I was just being lazy at the time, you know? It's a hassle to create 10 accounts. It's a hassle to deposit money in all accounts. It's a hassle to verify your name, your address, your passport on multiple accounts. Like, why do I need to do that, right? So I think a lot of people that are kind of new to the game, they're gonna listen to this video and kind of let it go in one ear and out the other. But let me tell you something now, boys. One of the most important things you can do for your gambling career is have to have multiple bookies. Now, I'm not gonna go out there and say you need to have 50. Like, I, I have access to over 50. Because that's how I have access to bookies in Australia, New Zealand, and the UK. And I'm due to have access to bookies in America very soon as well. So I'm gonna have access to like hundreds of bookies legitimately, right? But I don't tell people that they should do that because that's very overwhelming and I'm in like the 1% of people who do do that. You don't need to have access to that many bookies, but at least have access to six or seven. Six or seven isn't that bad. And I'm gonna tell you the reason why you wanna have access to these bookies, right? The number one reason is because there is many reasons, right? But one of the main reasons is because it enables you to be able to go line shopping. Now, if you don't know what line shopping is, basically means when you go on your bookmaker accounts, and like I say, if you have six or seven open, you're able to shop for the best betting line, right? If I have a, if I have a, a bet that I wanna place this weekend, and on most bookmakers, the bet that I wanna place is for a fighter who's plus 100, right? Let's say he's plus 100 on four or five bookies, but there's a bookie out there who's holding him at plus 110. And let's say I wanna max bet. Let's say I wanna make it a massive, massive bet and I'm gonna put 10% of my bankroll on this bet, right? On five bookies, I can place the bet at plus 100. On the other bookie, I can place it at plus 110. What one am I gonna choose? Obviously plus 110, right? But you might be thinking, oh, plus 100 and plus 110, it's not a major difference. Do I really wanna have access to six or seven bookies and look at each individual bookie to find out what has the best odds? Like, it's just gonna take too much time. I don't care about plus 110, it's a marginal difference. But if we speak about this scenario specifically, if we're putting 10 units on it, we said 10 units, right? 10% of our bankroll. If we're putting 10 units on a plus 100 line, we're gonna get 10 units of profit back, right? 20 units return total. If we put 10% of our bankroll, 10 units on a plus 110 line, we're gonna get 11% back, right? 11 units back. So 21 units return overall. So we're actually getting a whole unit more, but for such a slight difference, plus 100 and plus 110 isn't that big in the grand scheme of things. Like when you actually look at it individually as a number, it probably doesn't even register in your mind that it's a major difference. But these small differences add up heavily. Even in that specific scenario I'm telling you about, you've already earned one unit more. 1% 1 of your bankroll more on one bet. Now obviously, you know, 10% bet is um, a little bit extreme. That very rarely happens. But we could be less extreme with the units risked and a little bit more extreme with the unit difference or with the line difference and still come up with the same result. Let's say now that the, the line discrepancy is different. Let's say you can get plus 125 on one, one book, but plus 100 on another book, which actually is entirely possible um, depending on what market you're betting in. You know, some of these bookies are terrible. They have terrible juice, terrible VIG in their lines. And if you line shop, you can often find big discrepancies. I don't think I've, I've hardly ever made a bet where the line has been the same on every single bookie. Usually there's some type of discrepancy on almost all bookies market wide. So you can definitely find the discrepancy of like plus 100 to plus 125. And if you are placing bets on these lines that are greater over the long term, you're gonna earn a lot more money. Like it can literally come down to you earning 50% of your bankroll more per year. And I know that sounds crazy and obviously it depends on how much on average you profit each year, etc., etc. but you can literally increase your bankroll by 50% just by betting on these good lines, just by line shopping. So that's the first reason why you wanna definitely line shop. The second reason is because it enables you to spread your risk out on multiple bookies, right? Or the second reason why you should have multiple bookies is because it enables you to spread your risk out. So keeping your risk to one bookmaker is stupid for a lot of reasons. First of all, they might not have high limits, right? So if you wanna place $1,000 on a bet, 
you're gonna flag up to that bookie. $1,000 is a decent sized bet for most bookmakers. As soon as a bookmaker sees you placing a $1,000 bet, you're gonna flag up on their system and they're gonna say, all right, this guy likes to bet fairly big. Because most of the time, people are betting $5, $10. I know if you're a big gambler, you might not actually think this is true, but it's very true. 99% of gamblers are betting $5, $10. So if you go in there trying to bet $1,000, instantly your account flags up. And they might not limit you right then, but they're gonna have an eye on you and they're gonna look at what bets you place. And then they're gonna be quicker to limit you if you actually start placing plus EV bets, right? Whereas if you're placing five to $10 bets, they're gonna be slower to limit you. That's been my experience. So it enables your account to last longer because instead of placing $1,000 now on this one bookmaker, you're placing $100 on 10 bookmakers, which still equal the $1,000 that you wanted to place. You're just not doing it on one specific bookie. You never wanna leave your eggs in one basket. Again, this is a life philosophy that also is true in sports betting. You never wanna leave all your eggs in one basket. Another reason, and we can we can actually speak about that specific, specific analogy, another reason why you wanna have multiple bookmakers is because you can't trust every single bookmaker. A lot of these bookmakers are complete crooks, they're very shady, and they're not operating under true morality. And what I mean by that is, I have personally had bookmakers who have just taken my money and kept held it hostage for two months. And I'm trying to get the money back off them, but they're making stupid excuses like, you can't access the money right now because you haven't sent us the correct verification. Even though I have sent them exactly what they asked for, they come back telling me that they need something else or that I made a mistake in what I sent them or they didn't receive it or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And they're literally holding my money hostage. I'm speaking personally, from experiences that, that I have had personally, right? So if I've had them personally, they can definitely happen to you as well. And they have happened to many other people as well. So putting all your money in one bookmaker is stupid for that reason. The bookmaker might just switch up on you one day, go through this stupid KYC loop, and you might be stuck there for months and months on end not having access to your money. If it's never happened to you, think it's like out of the realm of possibility, or you think that I'm a little bit paranoid and it's never gonna happen, but I said it on one of the videos I made recently. If you haven't had your bookmaker, if you haven't had your money stolen by a bookmaker yet, you probably just haven't been in the game long enough or you've been very lucky because it's definitely going to happen at some point. You will get the money back nine times out of 10. But by the way, there are cases in which the guys don't even get their money back because the bookmaker went bust or et cetera, et cetera. But I'm pretty sure that you, if you're in the game for long enough, you're at least going to have your money held hostage for a week or so. I've gone through it countless times. I can't even remember. So me spreading my stake out and having money in multiple bookies allows me to circumvent that. You know, if a bookmaker does shut me down or if a bookmaker does hold my money, I've still got money in other positions, right? I'm not putting all of my eggs in one basket. So basically the whole whole thing in the video is um, you should have as many books as possible. You know, I know it's a bit of a hassle boys, I understand that, but it is good practice and it will help you earn money over the long term in a multitude of different ways. And also it's gonna save a lot of mental stress and mental hassle when it comes to being limited, when it comes to having your money held hostage, et cetera, et cetera. But even if you think that none of that shit's gonna happen to you, cause it, just cause it hasn't yet, which it will do, um, you're still gonna earn more money because you're gonna have the ability to line shop if you have multiple different bookmakers. So yeah, make sure you don't just gloss over this video. It is an important video, although it may not feel important to you right now. But that's it boys, hopefully you learned something from this. Good luck on your bets and I'll see you in the next video.